Ahead of paper one, let's do some quick revision on the kinked demand curve. So the kinked demand curve is a model we use to explain a stable or rigid prices in oligopolistic markets where a few, a few large firms dominate. It shows that businesses may be reluctant to change their prices even when marginal costs change due to the anticipated reaction of rivals, hence sticky prices. So the demand curve is assumed to have a kink at the current market price. Above the kink for a price increase, demand is assumed to be price elastic because if one firm raises their price, rivals may not follow. They want to gain market share. So that firm that's increased price loses a lot of customers and also revenue. Below the kink for a price decrease, demand is assumed to be price inelastic. So if one firm cuts prices, rivals are likely to match it. They don't want to lose market share. So the firm that engaged in the price cut gains little market share. And if demand's price inelastic, revenues and profits will fall. The result is that stable prices may happen once you've established this, if you like, a stable price equilibrium, as businesses fear making themselves worse off by changing their prices. And the implication of the model is that the focus switches instead to intense different forms of non-price competition, including product blending and product differentiation. So here's the initial uh, sort of idea of the King demand curve. There's two demand curves, AR1, AR2. Depending on the likely reaction, if you cut price below P1, the likely reaction of other firms is to follow the price reduction. So we'll have a price in elastic demand curve. Raising price above P1, the likely reaction of the assumed reaction is to hold other firms to hold their prices. That causes a price elastic demand curve. So you end up with a, a kink demand curve shown in yellow there, AR, with a change in elasticity at the kink. And you can imply the marginal revenue, which lies below AR, from that diagram. Now there's a gap or discontinuity in the MR curve at the kink. So the question is, is that a profit maximizing equilibrium? Well, in this diagram, MC1 cuts through the gap in the marginal revenue curve. So that price and quantity might well be a profit maximizing equilibrium. And one of the key predictions of the King's demand curve is that even if costs go up, I've shown an increase in cost from MC1 to MC2, prices will be rigid or sticky. Uh, assuming firms are profit seeking, firms are again reluctant to change price even when costs go up. They're focused instead on non-price competition. A quick revision primer on the King demand curve.